The well, latest health check of the Great Barrier Reef says coral uh, coverage is still declining, albeit not as bad as first thought in the north of the reef. It is prompting concerns, though, that thousands of jobs, as well as animal species, are still at risk. Joining me now is Richard Leck, the head of oceans at the World Wild Fund for Nature. Thanks very much for your time today. Uh, look, the report card has a few different things in it. It does suggest that there was stronger than expected recovery from the two major bleaching events uh, in particular in parts of the north, albeit it's not entirely thorough, some of this check, because of safety reasons. What was your take on all of this? Look, what the, what the report says is that in the, in the entire time that the Australian Institute of Marine Science has been surveying the Great Barrier Reef, it's never had such poor condition of the Great Barrier Reef. They describe it as unparalleled. Um, there has been some small recovery in, in the northern part, and that's great news. It's great to see that there is resilience in the system. But overall, this is another wake-up call that the reef um, is in serious trouble, and we do need to take more action. So if we look at the northern region, which has been one of the bigger concerns, it does talk about stabilising an increase in coral compared to last time, but the concern ongoing, I guess, is it's still only just above a 30-year low, basically? Yeah, sure. So in that northern part, that, war, that bore the brunt of uh, the consecutive bleaching events in 2016 and 2017. So it actually sort of hit an all-time low um, after those events. And we've seen a small amount of recovery since. But if you look at the long-term trends, it's still at a really concerning, uh, concerning level. As I said, it's great to see resilience in the system. It means this report mm. doesn't mean we should be throwing our hands up in the air, but what it means is we should be hastening that transition away from fossil fuels to a renewable economy. How much attention should be focused, though, on adaption? Because climate change is obviously playing a part, according to scientists right now. Given the reality of the Paris Agreement, which a lot of countries are falling short on, well... There's a forlorn hope that the, you know, aimed to limit uh, warming to 1.5 degrees will actually happen. So is it fair enough to switch a lot of attention towards adaption? I think by far and away climate change is the overwhelming threat that the reef faces. And um, if we want to have a Great Barrier Reef into the future, we can't uh, abandon action on climate change. That's absolutely clear. That's what this report is saying. But also, mm. the second biggest threat to the, the Great Barrier Reef is poor water quality, water pollution that flows from farms in the Great Barrier Reef catchments. And we should be dramatically scaling up that activity as well um, to improve that water quality, to improve farmers' bottom line, but also to benefit and give the reef clean water. The Great Barrier Reef Foundation, of course, has this major grant, nearly half a billion dollars, to try to help the health of the reef. One of the things in its uh, outline it talks about shade cloth being placed on the water to stop the, the water and the coral heating up. What do you make of that? Look, I think it's early days for some of that science, uh, and it's important to remember the scale of the Great Barrier Reef. Um, I don't think anyone is suggesting that you could uh, shade the entire 2,500 kilometre length of the Great Barrier Reef, but certainly for individual high-value reefs that may be important from an ec ecological perspective or from a tourism perspective, there's some evidence that shading on those particularly hot days is a way of avoiding coral bleaching. But I can't ever envisage that that is a reef-wide um, uh, activity that's going to benefit the reef in any way, shape or form, that, that, that action on climate change would. Mm.